Hey, welcome back to another edition of A Face Brew Review. My name is Alex. I'll be walking you guys and gals to this review for the next few minutes here today. We've got a really cool limited release beer from Stone Brewing Company, Escondido, California, Richmond, Virginia, uh, Berlin, G Germany now, all over the world. Stone is. They're doing some really, really cool stuff in regards to expanding and still being an independent craft brewery. Uh, today we're looking at their Laurel and Dr. Rudy's Inevitable Adventure Double IPA. Dr. Rudy's and Laurel are uh, two of the hop varietals that they're using here today. Uh, Laurel, which has just been around since 2016, I think it's a relatively newer hop where Dr. Rudy's has been around for quite some time, so kind of an old meets new. Uh, and I know if it's uh, from Stone, it's probably going to be pretty, pretty darn hoppy with a very solid malt. Bill. So getting into the specs of this beer, 8.9%, pretty big, double IPA, IBU content is 84 from the folks over at Beer Advocate getting into the accolades here. We're looking at 3.95 out of 5, which puts it in that very good category, uh, kind of A, A minus, um, or A minus, B plus range, excuse me, and then from the folks on the tap, 3.88 out of 5 caps, so some pretty solid stuff uh, going on here. Other than that, I don't really have much more to talk about this beer. There's a nice commercial description on the back here that's labeled there. Uh, bottling date for this boy right here, very visible, 1-11-18. Today's date is the uh, 6th of February, so very, very fresh. You have to enjoy it up till 4 26 18, although I don't know if I'd wait that long. So other than that, let's uh, crack the cap on the inevitable adventure from Stone Brewing Company. I haven't had much stone lately. I've been drinking a lot of different stuff, a lot of some New England stuff. Uh, so I'm excited to kind of get back to my West Coast roots and see how this one goes. Ah, oh, the clarity. Look at that clarity. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful beer in the glass. See my reflection right through it. Uh, mild carbonation streaming from the bottom. Pouring kind of like an apple juice, kind of nice golden, uh, dark golden color there. Beautiful, beautiful head, about a finger's worth or so. Uh, kind of tightly compact at the bottom and then getting soap sudsy towards the top. Just an off-white eggshell color in terms of the complexion of the head. Really, really nice clarity to this one. Swirl it around, see if we sort of get any resinous, sticky glass lacing clinging to the edge of the glass there. You can kind of see a little bit there. Yeah, that's nice. Let's get into a smell of aroma on this bad boy. Oh, wow. That's very interesting. I get a mild kind of biscuity malt uh, up front. Very biscuity malt, actually. A little t almost toasted in a sense. Some grassiness. Get some piney hops there. Some florally notes. Really not much way in the way of things here in terms of... Yeah, there might be some like subtle, like kind of orange zest, maybe a little tiny bit of grapefruit, some lemon, an earthy spice, maybe just a touch of musty dankness, but really very, very subtle on the nose for a stone beer. Very, very subtle, I will say that. That mild biscuit, that, that grass, that mild grassiness paired with the... Uh, Biscuity maltness is what I get most up in the nose than some piney floral hops. Other than that, not too much. So, without further ado, cheers, pros. So, now you want to call, let's dive into uh, Laurel and Dr. Rudy's Neville Adventure, double IPA from Stone Brewing Company. Yeah, you can definitely tell it's a stone beer. Wow. No alcohol at all for 8.9%. That's a 9% beer. It's super smooth. Yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. I kind of get this almost like an iced tea vibe, like a like an Arnold Palmer half and half type thing from this. Not no, I'm not gonna put that in a box here. Um, but what I am getting up front is like some orange peel, some lemon quality to this one. I also get a really nice kind of grassy, earthy, florally note, just very, very kind of like, it's really hard to pinpoint. It's very, very difficult to pinpoint, but there is that florally grassy, earthy element to this beer. Everything seems to kind of be in tune with one another. There's not like 
big orange, big grapefruit, or big earthy dankness, or big piney, uh, you know, pine needle. It's all kind of really balanced there up front. Um, I do kind of get that biscuity, almost crackery malt sweetness middle of the mouth. And then at the back end, I get more of the piney resin, earthy, maybe a little bit of like citrus in there as well. It's really smooth. Definitely orange citrus up front. You get that maybe a little bit of grapefruit, then you get that crackery malt, toasted malt almost. It's not toasted, but it just it has this kind of crackeriness to it. Like if you left a, like saltine crackers in the oven just a little too long, there's just like this toasted. I don't know why you're putting saltine crackers in the oven to begin with, but like. It, it just has this really interesting malt bill. And then back end, you do get a little resinous coating and you get some pine and some floral notes along with a little bit of an earthy kind of forest floor element that's, that's being left behind there. It's really nice. It really is. It drinks really smooth. Herbally. Yeah, nice stuff. Getting in the field of mouth, medium body, uh, really nicely carbonated, just kind of light effervescentness. Uh, very, very smooth to drink, like you hear me saying. I've already knocked out half of the spear, 9%. Um, maybe just a touch of warming in the chest, but not not really anything as far as that goes because I've been drinking as I've been talking here with you guys. Uh, really nice dry finish. You get that citrus that... that um, you know, citrus up front, then you get that mild crackery toasted element, and it dries out uh, on the back end with some piney resinous notes. Um, really dangerous for 9%, I'm going to say that. This is a really interesting beer. I've seen some really bad reviews uh, that people have given it, and I've seen some decent reviews. I like it. I think it's a really well-crafted beer. You can definitely tell that in the taste um, and the mouth, the mouthfeel as well. It does really doesn't have a nose. I'll, I'll say that it's very mild on a nose for a stone beer. Uh, but as for a grade, I'm going to go 88 out of hundred. I'm going to go right there at B plus beer. I think it's a beer, uh, that's very, very enjoyable. Very, very smooth. Um, I don't know if I would get it again, but, um, it definitely was on draft and there was something else there. I would, I would, I would drink it for sure. I love stone beer. This is not one of the the better stone beers, but I'm not saying it's one of the worst stone beers. It's just it, it's not like a double IPA. It's exploding out of the glass. It's not an onslaught of hops on your palate. It's just something that's really, really built well, really balanced. I think is something to take away from this beer. So wait it for me, but that's not what matters. It matters what you guys and gals think, and you can let me know by leaving that all in the comment section down below. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Let me know. Leave it all there below. What beers are you guys drinking right now? Leave it there. I'd love to hear beers that I can review next, beers that you might want to trade with me. So let me know. Leave it all again below. Until next time, guys, I really appreciate you commenting, liking, subscribing. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate it. Until next time, we'll see you all again on Bayface Review.